there's just one problem with it. It's over $500. I'm gonna have to spray paint that. That did not work. That was an absolute fail. One million to go. Is it perfectly flawless? No. That's, that's hanging real low. Yes. I did it. Their little donut counterparts. Form. Welcome or welcome back to my channel everyone. If you guys are new here, my name is Mahala and I do DIYs, room makeovers and furniture flips. Today we're going to kick it old school and we are doing a DIY, kind of a classic DIY that was really on trend a while ago which is pendant lights. The reason I'm doing this DIY is because these are intended for my own space. So I am doing one for my upcoming lounge room makeover and then the other pendant lights are for my bedroom because I I currently don't have a bedside light and my partner is kind of using like a really old desk light. The first DIY was very much inspired by an image I saw on Pinterest. Pop that up on the screen for you guys. It's a beautiful light. There's just one problem with it. It's over $500 and to be honest it looks super DIYable so I figured that that would be a great one to kind of do as a little project. The things that you're going to need for this DIY are two floral craft rings. I actually I picked these up from Michaels. Originally I was planning to go with an embroidery hoop but these had a little bit more thickness to them which will work much better for our project later on. You'll need some wooden dowel. I actually picked these up from Amazon. They're bamboo roasting sticks so they've got a fine point to the ends which we will remove. I thought that these would be a slightly cheaper option rather than going with the wooden dowel route, which I've recently learned is rather expensive. And we have some vintage gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I have some gold chain, which we're going to use to help secure the light fixture. And lastly, because I am actually going to hardwire this, you'll need a light fixture that you can get. I got this one on Amazon. I did actually order it with a brass top, but it's come in like a weird chrome color. So I'm gonna have to spray paint that it won't really be seen much anyway but just for continuity's sake so then that will hang down from our ceiling essentially it's going to sit in between kind of kind of like this but you know in a way where it's not falling because i can't hold it properly <laughs> ow <laughs> this is a roaring success yeah so it'll sit kind of like that. Let me just have a look at the inspo picture and see how many different heights. Okay, so looking at the inspo picture, there's one, two, three, four different heights for this. If I have the internal sit at six inches, then we can go seven inches, eight inches, nine inches, and 10 inches. And then we go up by an inch each way. So there's kind of half an inch on each end that'll hang over and then go up from there. I think that's the way we're gonna go. My original plan was to tape the dowels together and cut them with my mitre saw. However, I definitely wouldn't recommend this option if you're using the bamboo skewers like I did. That did not work, that was an absolute fail. I think it's, they're just too fragile. So we're going with plan B, which will be to cut them individually. I am really sad that that happened. It's highly unfortunate. <laughs> so instead we're going to go with my mitre shears. It does mean that there might be a little bit of discrepancy in the actual height of each piece, just just because obviously I can't I can't cut them all together at the same time but this is definitely a good plan B okay one done one million to go One million pieces later and I'm done we have seven inches eight inches nine inches and 10 inches in the wooden bamboo dowels. So now it is time to attach them out <laughs> to, to the rings. On each piece, I'm drawing a line as a guide where it will overhang off the edge of the hoops. The seven inch piece will overhang half an inch on each end. The eight inch piece will overhang one inch on each end. The nine inch will overhang one and a half inches on each end. And the 10 inch will overhang two inches on each end. If I were to do this again, I would recommend joining the two rings together first with dowels on the inside of the hoops where they won't actually be seen at the end of the project. This will help to give a stronger base and prevent the wooden dowels from attaching crooked. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> it's 
done. I will admit there is a lot of hot glue, stringy bits everywhere. So we definitely need to clean that up, but I think it's looking pretty good. Is it perfectly flawless? No, it is not. But what in life is? Not this. But it's pretty good. And as far as a DIY light fixture goes, I'm happy with it. It almost lined up perfectly. It's not 100% straight and accurate but it is pretty dang close and I am very happy with it. Now that we've got this shape happening we need to spray paint it. To get the gold coverage I wanted this actually took a lot more spray paint than expected. It was almost two cans. If you're wanting to save costs because spray paint is not cheap you could definitely use a regular acrylic gold paint instead. After spraying the pendant I covered part of the light fixture just leaving the chrome silver part exposed and then I spray painted that gold to match. I also put tape in the part where the light bulb will go just to prevent any of the spray paint from getting in. This is our current rental light fixture. We're gonna change that out now with a pendant here. At the moment, if I put that, that's, that's hanging real low, which we don't want, but I can adjust the length. done this right and I'm gonna turn the power back on now oh and put a light bulb in of course moment of truth so that's worked which is amazing and now we need to just add the final pieces to the actual light fixture string it all up and pop it into place I'm so excited to see if it all works out I think it will I think it will I have positive vibes manifesting all of the you get it so I thought a lot about how I actually want to attach the pendant and we're going with the chains which I did also spray paint to match because the color before was a little off and then we've got some hooks here I was kind of hoping that I could just screw them in I'm gonna have to do a small pilot hole after making a small pilot hole I screwed four of the hooks into the top hoop making sure that the opening of the hook faced down I love it. I do obviously need to make some adjustments to the chains, but I think it's pretty cool and it's it hangs. It works. I love it. On the opposite shore. Hello, Mona. I reach through mysterious ceilings. My holy hope. I look for the things I don't know. <laughs> I did it! I'm so happy. I think it looks pretty cool, especially for a DIY. You know, like there's improvements. Could be a little straighter, could be a little smoother, but overall I think it's looking pretty good. We still have more DIYs to do, so let's head back downstairs and do the interchangeable DIY pendant lights. Let's get into DIY pendant light number two. Why do I do this every time I try and do two? I always put two hands. Um, just two. Number two. I really wanted to make this particular pendant light, or actually I'm gonna do... I went to do that again. Actually I'm gonna do two of them, and I really wanted to make them interchangeable. So I will do two different styles for this, and I'm just using materials that I already have at home. I will be putting these in my own bedroom, but I don't know what style my bedroom is gonna take at the moment. I haven't done a makeover in there, it's kind of just a big mess and a bit of a mishmash of a whole bunch of things. So part of the reason that I wanted to make them interchangeable is so that when I do my bedroom design I can change out the material if I want to. It's also a good option if you are changing your style for people who have different styles and if the seasons are changing and you want to you know like it's fall at the moment maybe you want some fall vibes happening in your room. So to do this interchangeable pendant light you're going to need some embroidery hoops. I'm going to take two hoops 
for each one so I do actually have four and essentially they'll sit kind of like this like a little bit of a cylinder shape these are five inches and I just got them from the craft store then you'll need your pendant they came in a set from Amazon they're plug-in ones which is exactly what I wanted and you can just unscrew unscrew this pop it in and then reattach it so we will need to create a little bit of a base for here so that this can actually sit in then you're going to need materials so whatever you want to use for your shape i'm going with two different materials so i've got this rattan material the other one is this fabric which is kind of like a very textured woven material and it's really pretty i used it on one of my first flip projects actually which i didn't do on youtube i did this just by myself it was tough but essentially it was a vintage chair that I refinished and reupholstered. I think I've got a picture so I'll pop that up on the screen for you guys but I had some leftover fabric so I figured that this could be a good option and then to create a little bit of support for the pendant I'm actually just going to use some scrap MDF that I have lying around. Other than that you just need to go with whatever you want to do. So I'm going with a little bit of stain in the color provincial and also some black primer and paint spray paint by Bear. So both of these are going to accentuate our interchangeable pendant lights, I think. So step one, we're going to take our MDF board and one of the embroidery hoops and just unscrew it so that you can release the inner hoop. So first we just want the inner hoop and just trace around the outside. I have got a little bit of marker on here, but that's okay because on one of these, I am actually going to be painting these black. If you don't want that to show up, use a pencil. I just decided to go with a marker, but yeah, just use a pencil. Draw the second one if you're creating two, two pendant lights. To actually cut this out, I'm going to use my jigsaw so that I can go around the edge. If you didn't want to use a jigsaw or if you don't have a jigsaw, you could probably get some like thicker cardboard and use a Stanley knife. You can actually you can probably use a Stanley knife or a a craft knife. I think Stanley knife might be the brand name of the Australian version of this, but like a hobby knife. Um, you could probably use to even cut the MDF, but I'm just going to use the jigsaw because it's quick and hopefully, in theory, easy. Before I can actually glue these together, what I need to do is find the center point because we also need to make another hole for this that our light fixture can sit inside that section and have something to hold on to. My original plan was to actually drill a hole in the center and then use my jigsaw, but I figured we might as well try two different methods of cutting MDF together. So to start with, I'm just gonna lightly go around the edges and then progressively press in further and further. This method using a hobby knife or a box cutter is doable, but it definitely takes a lot of time and patience. Yes, I did it. Okay, now does it fit? Probably not. <laughs> Oh, it's a wee bit too tight, but that's okay. With a bit of sanding, I think it'll work. Yes, it fits! <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Obviously, it's kind of ugly right now, but that will all change. To join the rings to their little donut counterparts, I think I'm just going to use a little bit of E6000 glue just around the edges to secure it all in place. It says it needs 24 to 48 hours to cure. Maximum strength can take up to 72 hours. So we're gonna set that aside for now. While I let those cure, I will actually move on to some other parts of this project. So one is the rattan. Now, I know normally you soak the rattan to make it more malleable. I don't really need it to be more malleable because this shape is perfect. However, I do actually want to spray paint it black. So temporarily, I'm going to screw it down to this board so I can spray paint it black. It's just going to make it a little easier for me to actually get all of the coverage I want. And then we're also going to spray paint one and a half of these hoops black as well. The half is because the other one is curing with the glue at the moment. There is a life 
valley than your city Hurry and to cut my teeth I can take what I need to get by Doesn't make it easy other one and a half I'm actually going to stain. I think these are bamboo so it's not going to hold the stain in the same way but it is going to take away a little bit of that yellow colour that's going on which I don't really want. We need to get these sanded so if you didn't know you can actually sand MDF and it won't break down or anything. It might be a little bit fuzzy but if you go in with a really fine sandpaper perfect. So actually we're going to start off with a 120 grit and then I'll probably go up to a 220 grit just to make sure it's really smooth. I'm so excited to put this together. I think we're going to start with the easiest one. <laughs> Well, the one that I'm assuming is the easiest and that's a rattan because it's kind of got a little bit more of a solid shape rather than the fabric which is obviously a little looser. I probably could use some starch or something to um, sort of make it a little firmer. I think it's starch anyway but I don't have any so we will just see what happens. I'm gonna loosen the embroidery hoop. Don't be difficult with me. It's like catching on the bottom of some of the rattan. <laughs> a little challenging. So maybe I picked the wrong one <laughs> to start with. There we go. That's what I like to see. Oh, I did it. I did it the wrong way. <laughs> this is meant to sit inside. So um, good first go. So I need to do it like that. So you don't do what I did. You can see here that the MDF is sitting inlaid so that it's not like we don't want it sitting, we don't want that to be sitting on the top, we want that to be sitting on the top so you can't see it as well. When you put it in, do it this way. If I was gluing this down, of course it would be far simpler but because I want to have it as interchangeable it does make it a little trickier okay so interchangeable if you've got a more solid fabric if you have a fabric a little bit like this I think it will be beneficial to pop a tiny little bit of glue. That's given it a little bit more structure, just some hot glue around the seam. So let's see how we grow now. We have structure. Just need to put it around the seam of the fabric with a little bit of hot glue just to kind of give it some support. You know, we all need some support in life. Even your pendant lights. Yes, I think we're good. Check it's not a false alarm, it's not. <laughs> Look at them. They're so pr I mean, that just <laughs> form. They look amazing. I'm very happy. Now we're gonna check and see if these work. We have pendant lights and they're interchangeable. <laughs> Let's go test them out. I'm super excited to get these up. I'm going to start with the more modern one because I know that I'm going to end up leaving this one up at the end. So we're just going to pop this in place and I'll show you guys how it all looks. So I've got two little hooks up here that I'm going to use to pop the cord into and then eventually for the one that I keep up here I'm probably going to do like a cord cover but for today we're just going to hang them let's plug it in okay let there be light ah, I really like it I think the what I would recommend is if you guys are doing this DIY with fabric to try and stiffen the fabric a little bit just to give the fabric a little bit more of a solid shape I just think it all look a little better but how pretty does that look and then the second one and my favorite lamp we're just gonna pop in place and I'm just gonna leave it here because I love it so much turn this one on <laughs> I think it's really pretty perfect 
I love it. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video with the DIY pendant line. I hope that I've given you a little bit of inspiration for something like this that's super simple and that you can change it out. I'm really thrilled with how they worked out. There's definitely things that I would work on in the future and do a little bit differently. Like with this one, I ended up actually painting the top of this black when originally it was just the MDF when I pieced it all together. So I'd probably do that in advance and then with my other pendant light the one that i hung up in my lounge room i think i would probably add a little more structure with the hoops just to begin with on the inside where it's not going to be seen so that when i am putting it all together i have less challenges but all in all i think they worked out and i would love if you let me know which one your favorite is in the comments below i am a toss up between this one and the one in the lounge room mostly because i love the pattern that it makes on the ceiling it's like a sun and it's beautiful. I'll see you guys next week with a super fun DIY. I'm combining my woodworking skills and my sewing skills. I definitely have more woodworking skills. <laughs> I will see you guys then. Bye. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell notification so you get notified whenever I upload a video. Please do that. It really helps. <laughs> ah, mm, I've got the hiccups. <laughs> I'm back. So much fuzz! Get off! Pull on it like it's not just gonna drop down by itself. She says as it starts to drop down. <laughs> Stay. <laughs>